My name's Laura, and I understand I only have a little while to speak, so I'm just going to jump right to the end and say thank you very much. And in, <laughs> thank you. And in particular, uh, thank you to Henry Sagerman, who two years ago at G4G10 uh, gave me a preprint of a paper of his that really helped me get started with 3D printing. Now, when my math friends hear that I have a 3D printer, they pretty much always ask me the same question, which of course is, can you print a Menger sponge? And it's notoriously difficult to print a Menger sponge. This is a level four Menger sponge that you can get on Shapeways. And it's, they print on a very expensive powder printer. And even after printing, there's a lot of post-processing where you have to poke um, powder out of the holes. So basically, the answer is, if you have a really nice 3D printer, then yeah, you can print a Menger sponge. But if you have a filament-based 3D printer, like what I have, then maybe you're going to have a lot of trouble printing that Menger sponge. So why is that? The reason is that a filament printer prints things a layer at a time. So like, say if you wanted to print this frog, there would be uh, like this plastic filament wire. It would come up through a hot end like a glue gun. It would paint the first layer of the frog um, down, and then the build platform would move down, and it would eventually build up the whole object. Now the problem with that is if your object has an overhang like this, then the slicing program has to put scaffolding under that arm, under that overhang, otherwise the nozzle would have to print in the air. Now, of course, for a Menger sponge, it's pretty much all overhang, right? So there's support material everywhere inside. It's terrible. So I'll have this with me later if you want to look at the failure. So you might want to give up and make your Menger sponge out of origami or just go play Minecraft for a while and you can make your Menger sponge in Minecraft. But, uh, oh, or you could make slices. So these are all slices of uh, level three measure sponge horizontally. And each of these slices uh, is just on a coaster, so there's no support. It's easy to print. This one on the bottom left here, you can see it's this slice. Okay? So we can just take all the different types of slices of a measure sponge and print these. But uh, to print the whole thing is a problem. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? Well, we ask the internet, usually. And so if you ask the internet, what happens is uh, there's a person named Gaia on the very good blog girl with a 3D printer, and she had a brilliant idea. And her idea was this. Take the Menger sponge, cut it in half, and print it in two pieces, and then glue it together. Now, what was smart about this is that on a filament-based 3D printer, there's no problem printing these angles, right? So th what's the problem is printing like a flat overhang like this. So if you're willing to use some glue, which is to me kind of like using glue in origami, it's sort of cheating. You don't want to do that. Uh, you know, if you wanted to, though, it comes out pretty good if you do that. And as a bonus, you get to see what it's like on this side, which we'll talk about later. But the game really changed about a month ago when someone named Bill Owens on Thingiverse made this model, which was a brilliant idea. He found a way to print a Menger sponge on its corner. Now, if you think about it, that's not very stable to print, okay? It's gonna fall over. So what he did is he built a custom stand that holds it up, prints right with the model, and then snaps off. So now suddenly, we can print a level three Menger sponge on a, a regular filament printer, an inexpensive printer. It actually is easier to print than on Shapeways because we don't have to poke anything out under the holes. I'm fairly certain nobody could do this until this year and until Bill Owens' cool idea. So now that we can print that, let's take a look at these nice slices. So I I'm gonna have these over there on the table, and so you can play this game later if you like. The game is we take a Menger sponge and we cut it along some slice. What does it look like on the inside? Okay, so this particular slice, if you've seen this before, this is the one you've seen. Sliced right down the middle on the diagonal, you get two identical pieces. What does it look like on this hexagon slice? How many holes does it have? Where are the holes? What shape are the holes? Some of you already know this because this is a popular one to look at. If you don't want to know the answer, just close your eyes just for a minute, okay? And then you can come and do this and try to draw it yourself, okay? So ready? I'm gonna show you the answer. So close your eyes if you don't wanna know. Here we go. That is what it looks like on the inside. It's amazing, isn't it? I know those of you guys with your eyes closed, just stay put for a minute. You'll be able to open. <laughs> but it's so you can't even imagine how beautiful it is. Okay, so here, uh, oh, by the way, um, David drew this very nicely yesterday during the contest where we were trying to see if people could draw these. So David has won a level three filament printed Menger Cube. Come find it for me later. 
Uh, here is what it looks like when it's printed on uh, level uh, three and sliced. It's very pretty. Lots of those things. You can open your eyes now. Okay, so here's another slice. I'm going to do two more because there's probably a lot of you who have already seen the first one and think, oh, I already knew that. None of this is new. Well, ha, there's like infinitely many ways that I can slice this cube in half. So here's another one. This slices the cube completely in half along a different diagonal. This time the slices are like these rhombuses. Okay, so what kind of holes are in here and what do they look like? That's the question. Again. Close your eyes. If you don't want to know, you can come and play this game, and later we can peel this off and see what it looks like under there. But uh, here, here comes the answer. It looks like this, believe it or not. Now, earlier, to, earlier yesterday, uh, Glenn drew an incredibly good picture of this, and so he has won uh, this level three filament printed uh, Menger cube. Uh, and then there's one more. So here's this green one. A lot of the slices make things that don't look so great, uh, some of them look really nice, some don't. Some slice the cube directly in half, some don't. This one does not slice it directly in half. Okay, so you get two, step, two different pieces, different sizes. And now we get these faces that are these irregular hexagons. What does it look like inside? This is actually my favorite one. Uh, so close your eyes harder if you want to play this later. <laughs> uh, there we go. And Tanya, I know it's beautiful, isn't it? Tanya. Uh, correctly drew this yesterday. I'll take it away so you can open your eyes. Uh, and so she's also going to get a level three Menger sponge for that. Um, so oh, let me end the talk by saying hello. So we'll end in reverse. So hi, my name is Laura. This is how you can contact me if you want to talk about any of those things in the list or anything else. I'd be glad to. The object at the bottom is a 3D printed hinge dissection that changes a triangle into a square. That's going to be in the gift exchange. It's printed all in one piece, completely assembled with the hinges intact. And I have some over there if you want to see what it's going to look like and play with it. And thanks.